Diablo 2 Resurrected. Diablo 2, the story so far. September 17, 2021. The Lord of Terror returns in Diablo 2 Resurrected, bringing with him millennia of cosmic baggage spanning numerous realms, books, and games. To help you better understand this state of sanctuary at the beginning of your new adventure, we put together a brief timeline of the tug of war between the high heavens and the burning hells and the chaotic events sparked by this strife. Read on to relive the history of Diablo before you embark on your journey in Diablo 2 Resurrected. The Eternal Conflict Since the beginning, light and darkness engaged in an eternal war called the Eternal Conflict, each vying for the power to hold sway over all creation. On one side of this conflict were the angels of the high heavens, warriors led by the Angerous Council of Archangels, who believed that only absolute order could govern the realms. On the other, the demonic denizens of the burning hells, led by the prime evils, Diablo, Ball, and Mephisto, who claimed that darkness and chaos were at the center of all things. Yet despite the length and sheer magnitude of, of the battles between these factions, neither could gain the dominion over, over the other for long. The Archangel Inarius, exhausted by the endless conflict between the heavens and hells, sought to create a peaceful world devoid of the strife that had consumed both realms for so long. To this end, he joined forces with the demoness Lilith, daughter of hatred, and gathered the renegade angels and demons sympathetic to their cause to create the mortal realm of sanctuary. And Arius utilized the world stone, a powerful artifact that had long been fought over by both factions, to conceal sanctuary from the prying eyes of heaven and hell. The dissident angels and demons of sanctuary gave birth to the forebears of humanity, the Nephilim. When it was found that the power of these entities could eclipse that of their progenitors, some were concerned that their strength might draw the attention of the high heavens and burning hells. When Inarius left to contemplate this revelation in solitude, Lilith, fearing for the safety of her children, rampaged through sanctuary and butchered every angel and demon residing in the realm. Inarius was forced to banish her to the void and tampered with the world stone to curtail the power of the Nephilim. Each generation grew weaker, their lifespans diminishing over time until they fully transformed into a race of mortals who possessed little knowledge of their forebears. The Sin War For a time, mankind led a peaceful existence in sanctuary, but as with all good things, it was not to last. The lords of the burning hells unearthed the mortal run that had been hidden from them, and kindling the great sin war. The struggle saw an Arius pitted against the forces of hell, each attempting to subtly coerce and manipulate the humans to their respective sides. Both vied for control over humankind, mankind, the demons seeking to brandish the mortal denizens of sanctuary as weapons in the eternal conflict, while Anarius sought to keep control of the perfect world he had created. To influence humanity, the prime evils of the burning hells founded the Temple of the Triune. This cult was comprised of three branches devoted, unbeknownst to the mortals, to alter egos of the prime evils, Mephis, Dialon, and Bala, the Triune slowly and subtly seduced humanity to the side of sin, growing in number as the decades passed and the influence of the prime evils went unchecked, in an attempt to offset the Triune's growing power. Inarius adopted the guise of the Prophet and created the Cathedral of Light to preach the tenets of the High Heavens. The stalemate between light and dark continued in sanctuary as it had in heaven and hell. Both the Triune and the Cathedral of Light spread their respective Gospels throughout the lands and amassed swaths of believers until their game of chess was upset by the return of humanity's first mother, Lilith. 
Lilith weakened the inhibitions put upon the world stone by Inarius, allowing the Nephilim to regain their former powers. She then manipulated a farmer, Odysseus Ul Diomed, into weaponizing his reawakened Nephilim abilities. Odysseus led his fellow Nephilim in a revolt against the Triune and the Cathedral Light, further manipulating the World Stone to amplify the Nephilim's otherworldly powers and drawing the attention of the High Heavens to Sanctuary in doing so. A triplicate war broke out, ending only in Inarius banishing banished Lilith to the void once more, and the Odyssean realized that the unchecked Nephilim could spell doom for all the sanctuary. He sacrificed himself once more to once more suppress the power of the World Stone, divesting his fellow Nephilim of their regained abilities in the process. Following the Odyssean sacrifice, the Anguirus Council and the Mephisto Coven convened to decide the fate of Sanctuary. Both sides of the Sin War came to an eventual agreement. In exchange for Anarius eternal imprisonment in the burning hells of Mephisto, Heaven and Hell would refrain from interfering in the affairs of Sanctuary and would instead allow humanity's future generations to walk in the paths of light or dark of their own unbiased accord. Thus, mankind's memories of the Sin War and the demons and angels that had once walked among them were erased, and the entire affair faded quickly into history. The Dark Exile and the Haradrim the agreement Mephisto had made with the Anguish Council drew the ire of the four lesser evils of the Burning Hells, who began to question the authority of the prime evils. They believed the three to be unfit to continue the fight against the High Heavens, and began an uprising that consumed all of Hell. The lesser evils emerged victorious and exiled the prime evils to the mortal realm. Mephisto, Diablo, and Baal swept through Sanctuary, ravaging its eastern lands for decades and leaving immense suffering and chaos in their wake. Their presence was eventually noticed by Tyrio, the Archangel of Justice, to combat the prime evils. Tyrio formed the Haradrim, a faction of powerful mages who devoted themselves to the destruction of the Demon Lords. The Haradrim pursued the three throughout Sanctuary, armed with soul stones fashioned out of the world stones shards by Tyrio that were capable of impersonating the prime evils. The Haradrim succeeded in capturing two of the three demon lords within the soul stones and locked them away. After a lengthy pursuit, Jared Kane and his fellow Haradrim sealed the last of the three evils Diablo and hid his soul stone beneath Tristan Cathedral, with the threat of the prime evils no longer looming over the land, and the duty entrusted to them by Tyrael accomplished, the Haradrim slowly faded away. Once more, the people of Sanctuary knew peace. The Darkening of Tristram Years later, while well like monarch named Liar came to Tristram and named the town his seat of power. Unbeknownst to Liar, the soul stone that had been sealed beneath the cathedral long ago had become corrupted by Diablo's power over time. The Oryx advisor, the Archbishop Lazarus, found himself drew to the soul stone and the energy emanating from it. Diablo corrupted Lazarus and compelled him to free 
the demon's weakened spirit. To manifest himself once more, Diablo sought a mortal body to house his ephemeral soul. He tried first to possess Leoric, but was unable to fully dominate him, leaving the king a maddened and senseless husk of his former self. Diablo turned then to Leoric's son, Prince Albrecht. The demon forced Lazarus to embed the soul stone in Albrecht's forehead, thereby allowing Diablo to seize control of the prince's body. Leoric, driven mad by Diablo's failed possession, accused the people of Tristram of masterminding his son's disappearance and began executing those he deemed guilty. Leoric's knights were forced to slay their king leaving Tristan with neither ruler nor heir to guide them through the encroaching darkness. Lazarus took advantage of this uncertainty and united the people of Tristram to rescue Prince Albrecht, luring them into the catacombs beneath the cathedral. Townsfolk rallied on Marseille, but the lies of Lazarus led them only to their gruesome deaths at the hands of a monstrous butcher. Diablo, fed by these sacrifices, grew in power and began summoning demons to terrorize the countryside as he continued to regain his strength in preparation to free his brothers, Baal and Mapisto, from their own prisons. From the darkness emerged an unlikely hero. One of many drawn to Tristan, seeking to put an end to the plague of demons. He delved deep into the labyrinthine bowels of the cathedral, slaughtering fiends and uncovering Diablo's nefarious plot before coming face to face with the primeval himself. The hero succeeded in besting Diablo, but was forced to embed the soul stone within his own forehead to contain the Lord of Terror once more. Evil returns. Though the hero had prevailed over Diablo, the power of the soul stone overwhelmed him. A broken man who had been hollowed into little more than a vessel for Diablo. The hero took up the mantle of the Dark Wanderer and began journeying eastward. Thus, in the wake of destruction, does the story of a humble new hero begin. Your story. Embark, if you dare, upon a journey into the suffocating darkness of Sanctuary where you'll unravel the mysteries of the Dark Wanderer and unearth the fates of the Prime Evils. The Lord of Terror returns on September 23rd. Experience an epic story that unfolds across five district acts, distinct acts, race hell is one of seven unique classes and battle your way through hordes of hellish beasts and undead abominations to uncover the fate of the prime evils. Okay. That's great. I'll see you in character creation on part one. Thank you.